Salvador is one of the most dangerous countries in the world. Everything about MS-13 is extreme. Their motto is murder, rape, control. The number 13 is used in induction ceremonies. They do things like kill 13 people, rape somebody for 13 minutes. There was something very unsettling about not having obvious motive to commit all this violence. It is a hugely threatening organisation. It's join the gang or be killed by the gang. Once you're a member, you can never leave. MS-13 was founded by political refugees fleeing the violence in El Salvador in the 1980s. A gang that really took off in America. MS-13 is American-made. You wouldn't believe how bad these people are. I think the Trump administration have decided to really home in on MS-13, their violence, the threat to Americans. They're not people. These are animals. So we're going to take care of it. He's going to send back a great deal of El Salvadorans. We are taking them out by the thousands. So there is support for the idea of sending these violent criminals back. And some of those people are returning, and it's causing a problem in El Salvador again. Getting on a plane to one of the most dangerous countries in the world is a bit daunting. You're going in knowing that this is a city completely run by gangs. Just on the day we arrived, there were 23 murders. In the first few months of this year, there were nearly 500 people killed at the hands of MS-13. We went to a market and we thought this would be a good place to kind of get everyday life. And on the surface of it, it felt like normal people going about their business. But then an armed police car rolls by with people in the back with pointed guns and suddenly it reminds you that you're in a tense area. There were police everywhere and by six o'clock in the evening, it was stunningly quiet. It's almost like someone switched off the lights and what was a kind of bustling and busy area just turned desolate within minutes. And suddenly there are no people on the street. The gang violence is so extreme in certain parts of town that people just don't risk walking around at night. The police are almost militarized in El Salvador. They have this extensive program in the evening where they go out, they patrol the streets, looking for evidence of gang activity. What was difficult for me was there was constant chat about what they're looking for, people talking on the radio. Not being able to understand them, I had to rely on kind of body language, sense of urgency, how they were moving, how they were driving. It's quite scary. You are on completely empty streets. You feel the threat of the police there, all decked in navy blue, holding enormous guns. Have you lost any friends? Four friends. Four friends killed? In this job. We felt patrolling around with the police, like you're sort of peering in. You felt like a bit of a voyeur, and you quickly we're trying to imagine what it was like living behind those closed doors. You, know, you felt under the spotlight. They went to a heavy MS-13 area. There was a bar there that was pretty bustling. It was about two or three in the morning. Everyone was lined up against the fence, men and women, and they were quite intimately frisked. And their reaction to that wasn't kind of shouting and screaming and saying, I, I can't believe you're doing this. It was just quite fatalistic, really. They just said, OK, the cops are here. Out we go, arms on your head. They didn't even really need to be instructed on what to do. So it felt like quite a, a kind of regular event, really. 
Police say they believe that this is a bar that's used by gangs and they're searching these people to try and look for any tattoos, perhaps any drugs, weapons too, anything that might show membership to certain groups. A big part of me actually thought, we'll never get into a prison. And if we did get into the prison, I also thought, OK, well, we'll be shown the model inmates, but we won't actually be shown the proper gang members, the guys who are essentially running the prison. And running their gangs from inside the prison. We stumbled across another block that we walked into. We didn't realise, but that wasn't a place we were meant to be. An empty cell door, just bars, suddenly is filled with guys just crawling all over the bars. They were literally hanging off and kind of peering down at us. And there are just hundreds of prisoners staring at us. It felt menacing in a way, but I knew they couldn't get to me or do anything to me. My job being to film them, they couldn't have been better. They were sandwiched together, the light was great, they were covered in tattoos. It was kind of perfect, and I was more thinking about making the most of this scene that I didn't think I would get. They were all crammed in there, MS-13 tattoos everywhere, all really menacing looking guys. I was very glad for the bar that stood between us and them. So you've got like some guy kind of swinging on his hammock, kind of dead-eyeing you. Another guy with his kind of, you know, hands through the bars. It was really strong and amazing pictures. And actually it was quite weird looking at Cordelia pressed against that front bar, leaning on it, talking to them. I mean, she was inches away from them. On the surface of it, they looked very threatening, but they were willing to engage as well. They wanted to talk. How will they stop the gangs in El Salvador? Mm, I don't think so. I don't think so. The problem is the president. He didn't stand anything. You know what I mean? A lot of them had come from America. It said they'd been unfairly deported, were desperate to get back, even though some of them conceded that they committed violent crimes. We got wind of um, this young guy who'd been killed out in the um, what you could call the suburbs of San Salvador, the capital. We pull up at this arid field. We were sort of a bit hesitant as we approached, didn't quite know what we were going to find. In plain sight, an 18-year-old boy shot dead. For the first time, I was witnessing the reality of MS-13 and its brutality. So straight away, this felt like we had got our example of gang-related violence in El Salvador. As tragic as it was, that was why we were there. And then, of course, it becomes very clear very quickly that that sadly is this young man's mother. It's a sensitive situation. A family member is arriving at a crime scene where a murder has taken place and I'm between the dead body and the family member. And suddenly it felt like we were really invading a, a private moment for a family. So what do I do? This is part of the scene. I don't want to be intrusive. It's really tough, and, and I, did, I did film her, and she saw me and I saw her. I didn't rush up to her, but I didn't back away either. <laughs> You're trying to illustrate the gravity and level of violence that this gang is capable of and the impact it's having on families. 
I'm very much wrapped up in the moment of what's going on. As soon as my camera's to my eye, then I'm in that world of documenting what's in front of me. The body was kind of put into a cellophane bag and literally hurled onto the back of the pickup truck. The clunk as it hit the back was pretty upsetting. <laughs> and then the mother beckons over the, the policeman and, and he takes off these worn down trainers and he hands them to her and she sort of takes them, looking at them like they're all she has left. It was just a kind of really shocking reminder of the sort of cheapness of life. The tragedy of El Salvador, if you like, is that you've got this small number of people that have committed crimes that are returning to the country, but you've also got a lot of people who are being forced back because they didn't carry out the right paperwork. They are returning to a country that is far more threatening than the one they left. The thing with gangs in El Salvador, as we came to learn, is actually leaving them is almost impossible. As soon as you're a member of the gang, trying to get out is really a death sentence in and of itself. The gang recruits a lot of lost and desperate people, and they may turn out to carry out the most horrific acts, but not all of them got involved to just do that in the first place. They got involved because they felt lost. Mm -hmm.